In this video we're going to look at an application of quadratic equations. A high diver jumps from the 10 meter springboard. His height in meters above the water t seconds after leaving the board is given by h equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 8t plus 10. And we want to find out a how long is it before the diver hits the ground and b how long is it before the diver passes the board on the way down. So what we're looking at here is a quadratic equation and what I like to do is kind of get a picture of what's going on. So I like to look at the graph before I start. So here's a picture. Let's see if I can fit this in here. I think I can. Of the graph, h equals negative 4.9t squared plus 8t plus 10. So we have our time across the bottom in our x-axis, so to speak, our horizontal axis. And we have our height on the vertical axis. So these are seconds and this is the height of the diver. This is not the actual path of the diver. This shows the relationship between the time and the height, although a diver does look like that sometimes. That is not what this is showing because this is time. So what we could analyze this a little bit and say, well, after zero seconds, which means he hasn't jumped at all, he is 10 meters above the water, which makes perfect sense because he's on a 10 meter springboard. After a half a second, he's going to be, looks like, not quite 13 meters above the water. After two seconds, he's going to be about six and a half. And our first question is, how long is it before he hits the water? Or in other words, his height above the water is zero. So our first question is asking us to find this point right here, which we know as the x-intercept or the horizontal intercept. To find the horizontal intercept, we need to set h equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take our equation, and we're going to say, well, when he hits the water, his height above the water is 0. And this gives us now a quadratic equation to solve. So hopefully you're looking at this and you have some idea about which direction you want to go to solve this. When you're solving a quadratic equation, you could always solve by factoring if it'll factor. This doesn't look very promising for factoring because of the 4.9. Or you can use the trusty quadratic formula, which is what we're going to do. Before we do that, though, I want to talk about um, a lot of these problems have a situation where you can make your life a little bit easier. I'm just making this up now. This has nothing to do with the problem that we're doing. Okay, I'll put a little cloud around it here. Um, I see this a lot, so that's why I want to bring it to your attention. Maybe you have an equation like this. Say 32t plus 80. And your coefficients here, negative 16, 32, and 80, all have a common factor. In this case, it's 16 or negative 16. You can divide everything by, both sides by, negative 16 or whatever your common factor is and make your life a lot easier. So in this case, you'd have t squared, negative 2t. See, I'm dividing everything by negative 16. And uh, what is that, 5, I think? I think it's 5, 50 and 30. All right. Now, this doesn't factor, but if I'm using the quadratic equation, now I'm using much smaller numbers than I had at the beginning. And even if... 16 wouldn't go into everything. You could still use whatever greatest common factor you could find. For example, let's say that um, instead of uh, 80, let's say it was something 16 didn't go into. Let's say it was 40. Well, now 4 will go into all those. So you could, you could divide everything by negative 4 or positive 4. I'm just saying negative 4 because that makes my t squared turn positive, which I kind of like. So negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4, and then that would give you negative 8. Oh, I guess I could have done something bigger, huh? Looks like I could have done uh, 8, huh? Yeah, 4 isn't the biggest number. 8's the biggest number that goes into those. Let's do that. You, you want to pick the biggest number because then that'll make your coefficient smaller and just easier to work with. You don't have to. I mean, you're going to get the right answer if you plug it into the quadratic equation um, either way. But usually if the numbers are a little smaller, it makes it kind of nice. Plus, if it is factorable, it's going to be a lot easier to tell if it's factorable once you um, get these numbers to be smaller. All right, so it looks like I did that all right.
we don't have that situation here, unfortunately. But like I said, I wanted to bring it to your attention because I see it a lot in these kind of problems. All right, back to our task, which is to solve this equation. And like I said, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So hopefully you guys know that. If not, you might want to look it up or watch it on a previous video. So we have the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 4.9, times c, negative 4.9 times c is 10, all over 2 times a. And then we just start simplifying this. So by the order of operations, we're going to look what's under the square root first, because that's basically a grouping symbol. And we're going to simplify under there. So we're going to do our exponent. And then we're going to do our multiplication. So we'll take uh, 4 times 4.9 times 10, which I think is 196. Now notice that you've got a minus here, and then you've got a negative here, so that's going to end up being a positive. This product will be negative minus a negative is a positive. All over negative 9.8. So if we simplify what's under the square root, t equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 260. I think that's right all over negative 9.8 and we could take the square root of 260 and what do we get let's go to the nearest tenth 16.1 negative 8 plus or minus 16.1 over negative 9.8 so at this point we could break it apart and get our two answers one using the plus and one using the minus but let's think again about what it is we're trying to find here. Oops, I messed up my graph. That's okay. Let's see. All right, let's pull that graph in again. And think about what we're trying to find here. So remember we're trying to find where the diver, or how long it is before the diver hits the ground, which is going to be your horizontal intercept. This parabola has two horizontal intercepts. One's going to be over here in the negatives, and one's going to be over here in the positives. This is the one we care about. So if we use the plus, we're going to get one of these answers, and if we use the minus, we're going to get the other answer. And it's not necessarily that using the plus gives you the positive answer, and using the minus gives you the negative answer. You have to work it out and see which one. As a matter of fact, it's going to be opposite in this case. So we can kind of tell that if we think about using the minus sign, and we say t equals negative 8 minus 16.1, we're going to get a negative on the top. And we have a negative in the bottom. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Using the minus is going to be the option that gives us the x-intercept we want. So let's see, I'm running out of room here. That's OK. So on the top, I get negative 24.1 over negative 9.8. So I divide that. And let's round to the nearest tenth. We get, well, let's go to the let's go to the nearest hundredth. I should have went to the hundredth up there, but that's okay. Let's just write it out. So we get t equals 2.46. The reason I wanted to go to the hundredth is just because of this graph. Let's bring the graph in again. Our 2.46 looks pretty good with this graph. If I would have rounded that to 2.5, you know, I can see it's not 2.5 by looking at the graph. So rounding to the nearest tenth made it a little bit um, askew from our graph. So I feel very confident about that answer based on looking at the graph. Now if we would have used the, the plus, we would get this other x-intercept over here, which I don't care about, so I'm not going to go through that. All right, so that's our first answer. We're doing good so far. Here we go. Let's see. How long is it before the diver hits the water? We could say approximately 2.46 seconds. OK, let's answer the other part, part B. Let's get rid of this first. And then let's bring in our graph again. 
So the next question is, how long is it before the diver passes the board on the way down? The springboard is 10 meters high. So here's the springboard. The diver's here. He's going to go up in the air. He's going to reach a max height of 13 something. I guess we could find the vertex too. That might be a good thing to do. Um, and then on the way down, he's going to pass the board again at 10 meters. So this is the number we're looking for. How long is it going to be before he gets to this height? So we could estimate by looking at the graph that it's going to be somewhere between 1.5 and 1.75. So what is his height when he passes the springboard on the way down? How high above the water is he? Well, he's 10 meters because he's passing the springboard, which is 10 meters off the water. So what we're going to do is plug 10 in for h. Oops, I don't need an equal sign there. We want to know how much time is it going to be before he's 10 meters above the water again. t squared plus 8t plus 10. Well, when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, you almost always want to set it equal to 0 to solve this. So let's do that first. Let's set this equal to 0. Hmm, something interesting is happening here. Our c value is being eliminated. Now when your c value is eliminated, it kind of opens up some options for solving. We could go ahead and use the quadratic formula with our c value of 0, and it would work. But it's not going to be the fastest way. Whenever you have your squared term and your linear term, your t term, but no constant term, you can always factor this by and solve it by factoring. And it's not like factoring a trinomial in, in the way you might think. It's taking out the greatest common factor, which is... Um, t in this case. So if we take out a t, we get t times negative 4.9t plus 8 equals 0. So we have two things that are multiplying together to be 0. Now we can use the zero product property. So either that factor equals 0 or that factor equals 0. Well this factor right here, t equals 0, remember what we're finding is the time when the guy was 10 feet above the water. Certainly at time zero, he was 10 feet above the water because he was standing on the springboard before he jumped off. This value is going to be the other time where he was 10 meters above the water, which is when he's passing the springboard on the way down, which is going to be the number we want. So we can simply um, solve this by isolating t minus 8 from both sides. I'm running out of room, but Hopefully you know you're going to divide both sides by 4.9. So I'm going to take 8 divided by 4.9, or negative 8 divided by negative 4.9, and I'm going to get 1.63, whatever, so I'll just say 1.6. How long is it before the diver passes the board on the way down? Approximately 1.6 seconds. All right, so... That's pretty good. We're finding some different times when he hits the ground, how long before he passes on the way down. You could find his time at any height you wanted to by simply plugging in the height that you want. Subtract it over, solve using the quadratic equation, or factoring. This is probably going to be the only one where factoring is nice because my C's dropped out. Let's go ahead and do that bonus question and find the vertex. I'm interested in that now. In other words, what is the diver's maximum height? What is the maximum height that he reaches? Bonus question. C. What is the diver's... What is the diver's max height? H-E-I-G-H-T question mark. So on our graph, how high does the diver get above the waters can be here somewhere. I could also ask how long before his max height, but what we're basically finding here is the vertex. That'll tell us his maximum height. What is the formula to find the vertex? Hopefully you remember the vertex. We have a nice little formula to find the x value of the vertex, which is the opposite of b over 2a. We can just use our straight up formula here. 
Our B value is 8, so the opposite of B would be negative 8. Our A value is negative 4.9. All right, so we're going to get negative 8 over uh, negative 9.8. And let's divide that and get a decimal. So 8 divided by 9.8 is approximately 0 0.8. Okay, what is that? That's our x value of our vertex. And in our situation, our x value is time. All right, so let's look at the graph here. 0 0.8 seconds is about right here. That does appear to be the amount of time before he reaches his max height. We still have to find the maximum height, though. So how are we going to find that? Well, we know the t value. So all we got to do is plug it into our equation to find the other half of the vertex, or the h value, that corresponds with this t value. OK, so we know our equation. We know his height, that any given time, is 4.9 times that time squared plus 8 times that time plus 10. So we want to know how high is he going to be after 0.8 seconds because that's our vertex. So we have just to plug this in and start punching stuff into the calculator and we should get, have our answer. Okay, so 0.8 squared um, equals 0.64 times 4.9 is 3.8 one three six plus six point four plus ten so let's see let's add that up and see what we get three point one three six thirteen point two six four approximately I guess I can always say this is approximate here because my point eight was approximate so approximately 13 point, we'll round that to the nearest tenth, would be 13.3. Let's take a look at our graph and see if that makes sense. His max height of 13.3. Looks pretty good. Right about there, after 0.8 seconds, 13.3. Okay, so this is an application of finding the vertex. Well, that's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, with a graph and a situation and answer a whole bunch of questions. How long is it before he hits the ground? The key is to think about how those words relate to the graph. How long is it before the, well, the diver's not going to hit the ground, hopefully. Hit the water. How long before the diver hits the water? Okay, well, how does that translate? That's the horizontal intercept. Um, how long before he's 10 meters above the water on the way down? All right, so that's the height. I got to plug that in for h. Um, what is his maximum height? How does that relate to the graph? That's the vertex. So then you got to you know know those formulas and apply those formulas. All right, well I hope that helps and good luck with your quadratic equations.